Conveying what you want a website to look like is hard. You have a vision, your website designer has a vision. How do the two of you come together to create something truly beautiful and representative of your brand? We're gonna talk about that today. So let's be real. We have IT people in our life that manage our websites and manage our technical aspects of our business. And we have creatives. And creatives come with all these wonderful ideas. And coming together in between the IT person and the creative is the business owner. And the business owner has a whole vision for the, what the website should look like. How do you get all these people on the same page? So the end result is a beautiful, congruent, hopefully findable website. Well, I have a document called the Website Creative Brief. I'm gonna share it with you. The link will be in the description below. I'm gonna walk you some of the critical questions that you should be asking before you ever endeavor to create a new website look and feel. Because I tell you, getting all those people, the IT person, your vision, the creative person vision, it's just, it can be a nightmare of, of back and forth and arguments around colors and placement and design. It just doesn't have to be that way. But our responsibility as business owners is to make sure we get the stuff in our head onto the page. So the first thing we're gonna say clearly is, what do I do as a business? Do not expect the web developer to really understand your business. And unless you take some time to really educate them about what you do, it's not gonna resonate in the design. The next one is, what's the tone? Is it very corporate stuff shirt, like lots of navy blues and grays? Or is it something like um, an over the top where you've got all kinds of different rainbow colors and you got fun animals and things like that on the website? Very, very different look and feel based on what you do. So the tonality is incredibly important. Are we happy? Are we serious? Are we stuffed shirt? Are we friendly? All those things have to be illustrated to your creatives or they're not going to capture that tone correctly. The next one is, you know, what are your marketing languages? Like lay out all of your documents, have your brochure and your business cards and anything you spend some money creating, like a brand messaging statement or a brand guide, get that all out on the table. Make sure you walk them through it so they really understand all the effort and work you've put in to your brand to that date. Very, very important. Now the next one is kind of tricky. List three competitor websites that you lose business to on a regular basis. Now these are what I call, there's two different kind of competitors online. There's the head trash competitor and there's the actual Google competitor. The head trash competitor is the one you just hate. You know he, you lose business to him, he's a jerk and you just don't like, you don't like him and everyone has their short list. So they, those are usually the ones that pop up. Those are the head trash competitors. But the real competitors, as far as I'm concerned, are the ones that come up under Google, under a desired keyword phrase. Those people got it going on. They knew how to optimize their website and make it look great and be findable. So don't be fooled that the head trash competitor is the one that's doing SEO. Probably not. The market industry, you just, you have, it's like, it's like you have your focus on that competitor and you just can't let go. So remember that it's not about the head trash competitor, it's about the Google competitor and making sure you understand who they are and that you've looked at their websites. Okay, the next one is name three websites you would like your site to reflect. So go back into your bookmarks. Look at the sites that you continually go to over and over and over again. Why do you admire them? Why do you visit them? Why do you buy from them? There's a lot of visual communication. They say eight seconds or less someone will give you before they leave your homepage. So you have a very, very small window to make a very big impression. So make sure that you have kind of tuned in to the styles and sites that you really love. What are the colors you envision for your site? So if you already have a color guide or a Pantone brick or something that's gonna let them know, make sure to give them all those specs because they need to be looking at that before they even touch a uh, site comp or a look and feel that they'll create for the website. Of course, we're gonna give them all the logos Having the right pictures has been so difficult for my clients. They have a legacy. You know, it's kind of like if you set up a dating site and you use your picture from high school. <laughs> Maybe not the most accurate picture of what it's like to meet you today. So I want you to think about, do the pictures you have right now or the pictures you're going to use for your new website, are they really representative of how your business looks right now? Don't use old shots. Don't use old headshots. Use the most current 
hire a photographer. Wedding photographers are unemployed uh, Monday through Thursday. You can get a smoking deal on a great wedding photographer for like 250 bucks. You know, if you're gonna take a corporate a shot and you're like a service-based business, make sure everyone wears their logo shirt and you're all out in front of the building or you're by all the trucks that are lined up. These are the money shots. And we're gonna put those on the homepage, but without those shots, you're just, it's not gonna to come together like you envision. Then we're gonna make sure you have three main things that you can call out on a homepage, nothing more. And say, what are the specific features you would like to add to enhance the overall look and feel? My suggestion is an integrated form. So every page I go on the website, oh, look, I can talk to them right now. I can speak to an expert and I can fill that out and boom, I go in and I instantly get a call back. Social media icons. So there are two different kinds of social media. There is social media and anti-social media. Anti-social media is putting your social media icons in the footer in an incredibly small gray graphic. That's anti-social. If you don't want social media followers, by all means bury it like a scavenger hunt in the footer of every page of your website. If you're serious about social media, then you will have a prominent place, top of the website, top right corner, right next to your phone number. If it's serious about social, you'll put it in a serious location on your website. What three things do you want them to do before they leave your site? You want them to make a phone call, you want them to fill out a form, follow you on a blog, make a purchase. You really have to sit down and identify what are those little micro moments, those little tiny things that people do when they get to the website. Our dream as business owners is they're gonna come, I call it the dream click. The dream click is, oh my God, this site is gorgeous. And I instantly go to the contact page and fill it out. Boom. That's not how it works. You got to take me on a date and get, buy me some drinks and maybe dinner before we decide if we're going to get married or not. And every business owner wants their customers to get married instantly. It just doesn't work that way. I need a little wooing. So think about what is it you can woo me with that's going to dazzle me and make me want to go to that next level. Okay, then we have, of course, do you want a shopping cart? Do you have your logins to your website and your host? What are Google Analytics? Make sure that you're building a responsive site. All these things are on this creative checklist. So fill this creative brief out. Before you go to work with a web developer, get clear on what's important to you. Fill this out, review this with your team, then sit down with your developer and say, Build me a site comp, they call it, or a wireframe, what that first image is going to look on based on this information. Then what happens is the two of you will come together quicker and you'll get the look and feel that you had envisioned in your brain. Now it's out on paper and people can start to respond to that vision. So if you like a creative brief and you like streamlining your online marketing, you're in the right place. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell right next to it so you can get updates on my latest videos. The creative brief that you're gonna fill out right after this is linked in the description below. Thanks and we'll see you on the next video.